We begin with the song Dance with the Spirit, written by Jim Strathy and performed by Gene and Jim Strathy. Dance with the Spirit early in the morning and walk with the Spirit throughout the long day. Work and hope for the new life of born and listen to the Spirit to show you the way. Dance with the Spirit early in the morning and walk with the Spirit throughout the long day. Work and hope for the new life of born and listen to the Spirit to show you the way. Dance with the Spirit. Community Church on Redner'sville Road in Caring Place, Ontario. It's good to be with you again. And I'm Tom Holmes, the minister of the United Churches in Roslyn and in Thomasburg. Thank you for joining with us and others as together we worship God and consider God's work in our lives. We're glad that you have chosen to be with us today. Portions of today's service are based on materials from ministrymatters.com. All music is either public domain or used with the consent of the composing artist or adapted for use by permission of one license 400-433-M, all rights reserved. Today's theme focuses on who do we listen to as Christians? Who is our voice of authority as church communities? Please join us in our responsive call to worship. I'll read the one and ask you to join in on the all. Do not fret because of all the stresses in the world. Come, take the light in the Lord. Leave the unpaid bills, the pile of dirty laundry, the dirty dishes in the sink. Come, take the light in the Lord. Set aside the petty arguments, the backstabbing co-worker and the person with the I heart Jesus bumper sticker who cut you off for that last parking spot. Now is the time. Come, take the light in the Lord. God has raised up a new prophet filled with teachings of love and forgiveness. God has raised up a new prophet, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. Please join us in prayer. Open our hearts and spirits to hear the great good news of your power and presence with all your people. Fill our hearts with rejoicing as the words are proclaimed in song and story. Enliven us and remind us that you are with us through the pillar of fire, through the magnificent words of the prophets, through the ministry and love of Jesus Christ. Amen. And now we shall hear the song, Holy, 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 written by Reginald Heber and John Baca Stikes and performed by St. John's United Church in Elmville, Ontario.
acknowledge the frailty of our humanity. We think we know so much, O oh God, and with our meager knowledge we presume to judge others. We arrogantly announce our own righteousness without a compassionate thought. We proclaim your word when it suits us, and often only to those with whom we want to associate. We shut others out because of our faulty judgment and our blindness. There have been so many times in which our humble help would have been a blessing to someone, but we have placed our comforts before serving others. In the competing voices of today's world, we have turned around and around, trying to find a way to live. Help us, merciful God, to listen again to you. Help us to truly open our hearts to you. Remind us again of your great love and presence in our lives. Forgive us our foolishness and our stubbornness. Create in us new spirits, filled with your love, offering peace and hope to all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We are reminded of God's goodness and grace. Quiet your hearts, beloved of God, for God is speaking to you with love. Rest your spirits, struggling ones, for God will surround you with peace. Open your lives to God's power and presence and do not be afraid. God is with us now and for all time. Amen. Amen. Our first reading comes from Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 15 through 20. In the New Revised Standard Version, with Moses speaking, it reads this way. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people. You shall heed such a prophet. This is what you requested of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, If I hear the voice of the Lord my God any more, or ever again see this great fire, I will die. Then the Lord replied to me, They are right in what they have said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their own people. I will put my words in the mouth of the prophet, who shall speak to them everything that I command. Anyone who does not heed the words that the prophet shall speak in my name, I myself will hold accountable. But any prophet who speaks in the name of other gods or presumes to speak in my name a word that I have not commanded the prophet to speak, that prophet shall die. We will read responsibly from the hymn book of God's people of old, Psalm 111, and again from the New Revised Standard Version. Hallelujah! I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright in the congregation. Great are the deeds of the Lord. They are studied by all who delight in them. O oh Lord, your work is full of majesty and splendor, and your righteousness endures forever. You make your marvelous works to be remembered. You are gracious and full of compassion. You give food to those who fear you. You are ever mindful of your covenant. You have shown your people the power of your words in giving them the lands of the nations. The works of your hands are faithfulness and justice. All your commandments are sure. They stand fast forever and ever, because they are done in truth and equity. You send redemption to your people. You commanded your covenant forever. Holy and awesome is your name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Those who act accordingly have a good understanding. The praise of the Lord endures forever. And our final reading comes from Mark chapter 1, verses 21 through 28, and again the New, New Revised Standard Version. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Just then there was in the synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? 
I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And then the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept on asking one another, What is this, a new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once, his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. Let those who have ears hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Who do we listen to as Christians? Who is our voice of authority as church communities? As some of you already are aware, I was raised within a Pentecostal church and worshiped and ministered within Pentecostalism during some of my adult life. Many of my friends come from the Pentecostal and charismatic backgrounds. What many of you might not know is that the Pentecostal charismatic movement continues to grow rapidly, particularly in the majority or so-called third world even while many Christian churches are experiencing decline here in Canada and the so-called First World. Therefore, I continue to keep a close eye on what the Pentecostal Charismatic Movement is up to globally, including within the United States and Canada. And I must admit, while many Pentecostal Charismatics in the United States and Canada seem to be balanced and sane, there are some segments of the movement that have given me cause for great concern alarm even. For example, I am completely dismayed at those segments of this movement who call themselves prophets. Some of these prophets actually claim to prophesy that the former president, Donald Trump, would win a second term, would win the recent election. Some of these prophets' followers believed these prophecies. Who knows how they responded when Trump claimed that the election had been stolen from him? Who knows how they are now dealing with the reality that Trump lost? Thankfully, some of these prophets came out and apologized afterwards for being wrong. Others, well, they made up excuses for their prophecies not coming true. Others seem to have moved on without saying anything. Scary stuff for the Christian community and those so deceived. However, these recent events should serve as a warning to us as we consider the theme of today's service. Who do we listen to as Christians? Who is our voice of authority as church communities? As followers of Jesus living in chaotic times when political and economic matters can seriously affect our abilities to discern, we need to be asking ourselves, where are the prophetic voices who speak for God in our times? Where is the God of justice, righteousness, mercy, and love revealed in Jesus still speaking? How can we, as Christians, better hear God speak in spite of all the voices bombarding us in our interconnected global communication systems? Fortunately, our scripture passages read earlier deal with issues of a community of faith trying to live faithfully in a world that is full of demanding and dismaying influences. These passages suggest that, in order to live faithfully, a community needs a leader, a voice of authority, to help them navigate through a confusing world. For example, the entire book of Deuteronomy as a sort of farewell sermon by Moses to the Israelites before they cross over Jordan into the Promised Land deals with two issues. First, since Moses won't be going into the Promised Land with them, the people are wondering who will lead them. They were facing an uncertain future for which they needed to be equipped. They needed a leader whom they could trust was inspired by God and could speak with God's authority to guide them. Fortunately, Moses assures them that God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people. Moreover, God will put words in the mouth of the prophet so that anyone who does not heed the words of the prophet, God will hold accountable. Second, in words about not listening to false prophets and about false prophets lying, the passage warns, but any prophet who speaks in the name of other gods 
or who presumes to speak in my name a word that I have not commanded the prophet to speak, that prophet shall die. Whoa, scary as false prophecies are, it seems that it's even scarier to be a false prophet. In our gospel reading from Mark, we read of the beginning of Jesus' ministry. It was customary to invite a visiting rabbi, such as Jesus, to teach in a local synagogue, such as the one in Capernaum. This Jesus did. And while the Gospel of Mark does not tell us what scripture passage Jesus expanded upon in his message, we do learn that he astonished everyone with his teaching because of the authority he possessed. And then Jesus illustrated his authority rather forcefully by directly confronting and defeating evil, a deed that amazed those who witnessed it. Needless to say, the people decided that Jesus was a true prophet, and thus his fame began to spread. Well, that's all fine and dandy for those early Christians who heard Jesus teach and witnessed his ministry in action, but what about us here in the 21st century? How do we know when a prophet is speaking in God's name? How do we distinguish true from false prophecy? Let's go back to Deuteronomy for a moment to see what was expected in a prophet. While the Hebrew people of the time had other types of leaders, such as priests and elders, Moses and those who followed after him were understood to be prophets in the sense of the one who presented the words of God to the people. These prophets were not intended to foretell the future. Rather, they told forth God's word. These prophets were also countercultural in the sense of speaking against the death-dealing practices of the time. In the verses preceding the ones we read, the Israelites were warned not to follow the detestable practices of the Canaanite people that surrounded them, including child sacrifice and witchcraft, divination, or any other occult practices that claim to foretell the future by supernatural means. Rather, Moses explained to them that a prophet like himself would be raised up by God, while false prophets claimed to reveal what humans wanted to know, God's prophet spoke forth what God wanted to reveal. As a limited human being, raised up from within the community, the prophets who followed Moses would be imperfect. However, they were not allowed to speak falsely on pain of death. This punishment was meant to discourage prophets from using their prophetic status for self-promotion or to attack others or to manipulate people or to advance their own personal agenda. Most of all, the true prophet, according to the Gospel of John 12, 49, does not speak on their own, but only speaks the word that God wants spoken. Which brings us back to our Gospel reading for Mark where Jesus is presented as someone who came to proclaim the kingdom, empowered with the authority of God, as can be easily discerned from both his words and his deeds as recorded in the scriptures. Even though many prophets, some true, some false, arose after the time of Moses, the time finally came when the prophet arrived. Born from a Jewish girl, born fully human, Jesus not only spoke to God and listened to God, but also spoke forth God's word with authority. God's word is great. Speaking and hearing it bears great responsibility. So back to our original theme questions. Who do we listen to as Christians? Who is our voice of authority as church communities? We listen to God as revealed in Jesus. As God's prophet, Jesus can be a sure guide in a confusing world. Anyone hoping or claiming to speak God's words must be judged by the God revealed in Jesus. Anyone hoping or claiming to hear God's word must be discerning. 
While all human spokespersons for God are imperfect and will fail, those who know and follow Jesus as revealed in the scriptures will never be led astray. Thanks be to God. Please join in hearing and singing, O God, Our Help in Ages Past, written by Isaac Watts and William Croft, and performed by the Sharon Mennonite Bible Institute Singers. At this time, we would invite you as a token of your willingness to serve God with all that you are and have to give of your tithes and offerings to your local church. For Rendersville Albury Community Church, you can do so by PAR or by e-transfer as instructed. For Roslyn and Thomasburg, please continue doing as you have been doing. Given that we cannot physically gather, we shall dedicate those gifts at this time. We give you but your own, written by William Howe and Johann Koenig, and performed by Strathroy United Church. Gracious and loving God, we praise you for your constant care. We are grateful that you have claimed us as your own, that we belong to you as part of your people. Thank you for drawing us to our congregations where we share in worship and study, friendship and service with others.
who love you. Let our lives be useful for your purposes. We gladly give our tithes and offerings as a sign of the joy you give us to share with the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Over the years, the United Church of Canada has produced a lot of material for Minutes for Missions. What follows is a video that surveys the various ministries in Canada and abroad supported by m &S. For those of you who cannot view this, a warning. There is about 10 seconds of silence while the end credits roll. So don't be thinking that something is wrong. The music that accompanies the video is well worth those 10 seconds. When you're gonna sing that love song when you're gonna let it out When you're gonna be that perfect little thing that you are When you're gonna say hallelujah When you're gonna shout it out When you're gonna be that perfect little thing that you are You don't know what you got until it's gone can't see just how far you have come I am loving you every day You don't know where your road is gonna lead Or how many old souls you're gonna have to please When you're gonna let it out When you're gonna be that perfect little thing that you are When you're gonna say hallelujah When you're gonna shout it out When you're gonna be that perfect little thing that you are As we go to prayer today and the rest of this week, let us be mindful of Barb and Roger, of Lindsay, of John, of Rednersville Albury, and of Irma, of Jeff and Lisa, of Percy and Kathy, of Trinity Roslyn, and of Bert and Heather, of Paul and Anne, and of Paul of Thomasburg. 
We also remember the special request for prayer for little Lincoln and for the Rushton family mourning the death of Betty. In addition, let's not forget our political and medical leaders who are trying to contain this virus and restart the economy. Those who are working to enable that to happen, those who have lost friends and family to COVID-19, those living in long-term care facilities, those who are trying to unroll the vaccination program against COVID, and all of us who are once again having to adapt to a lockdown. May we not succumb to complacency regarding the pandemic and its ever-changing nature. Let us pray. What have we done, Lord? We want to praise you, so we splash your words on screens on a wall with brightly colored and powerful images. We shout your praises with hands held on high. We teach and preach your word, but we don't listen carefully for you. We are so busy trying to shout above the noise of the day that we don't take time to really listen and know you. The voices of the prophet spoke to people long ago who were too busy and anxious to hear. Their words streamed in the winds of time and have come to us. We need to pay attention to your message offered through them. You are our God, the God of all creation, the God of power and love, whose mercy is offered to us. In Jesus' time, he proclaimed the good news through words and actions, reaching out to those who were troubled, alienated, cast aside. He offered healing and hope to those others turned away. Help us to learn that you alone can heal us and fix those areas in our lives that are wounded and twisted. Help us to understand that you alone can offer to us a new way of life through Jesus Christ. Remind us again that as we have spoken the names of people and situations that concern us, praying for your healing touch, that that same touch is offered to us in Jesus' name. Lord, we need to let go of our control issues and place our trust wholly in you, now and forever. Help us, we pray. We ask all of these things in the name of the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our, Our Father, who, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our closing hymn is, We Shall Go Out, written by June Boyce Tillman and performed by Jean and Jim Strafty. shall go out with hope of resurrection. We shall go out from strength to strength go on. We shall go out and tell our stories boldly. Tales of a love that will not let us go. We'll sing our songs of wrongs that can be righted. We'll dream our dreams of hurts that can be healed. We'll weave a cloth of all the world of new life in Christ. We'll give our voice to those who have not 
not spoken We'll find the words For those whose lips are sealed We'll make the tunes For those who sing no longer Expressive love Alive in every heart We'll share our joy With those who still are weeping Raise hymns of strength For hearts that break in grief We'll leap and dance The resurrection story Including all in circles of our love. Our commissioning is based on Deuteronomy 18 and Mark 1 and is responsive. Go on, get out of here. God's prophet, God's son, calls us to teach others of God's power and might. From this worshiping fellowship, we go into the community seeking to tell others our stories. Go on, get out of here. Share how God has transformed you. Invite others to become disciples of this new teacher. We will invite others to share our journey, even if it scares us to death. Go on, I mean it. Get out of here. Share how God has brought you to knowledge and wisdom of new ways new opportunities, new ways of being. We go with joy. We leave in peace. Amen. Amen. Our benediction, Go Now in Peace, written by Don Beige and Nancy Price, is performed by the York Region Community Choir.